Amen. I greet you in the name of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. I am greatly, greatly honored to once again stand before you. I know who you are. I know your level in society. And I must say I'm greatly honored and privileged to stand before you. Um, Reverend, thank you very much for giving me opportunity one after another to stand before this great body of Christ. I was given a verse, and I would want you to have that verse at the back of your mind. I will use other scriptures to explain the same thing. But you have that verse at the back of your mind. The verse says, not by power or might, but by my spirit. This scripture highlights the importance of relying on spiritual strength rather than human effort. Christ exemplified this in the New Testament. Christ spoke about it. Christ encouraged us. Christ spoke in many ways, but there's a word he used, and I want to pull out that word, and it's the word that I'm going to talk about, but as I said, have this scripture. It's the same thing, just the terminologies, same thing. Have this scripture from now to the end at the back of your mind, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit. How do we maintain a posture where we are ever relying on spiritual strength? How do we maintain that posture? That's what I'm talking about, yes. Christ did it, he encouraged us, and this is what I want to talk about, maintaining that posture. And you see, if you maintain that posture, Ladies and gentlemen, you will see miracle after miracle after miracle. The person standing before you here this afternoon is a miracle in itself. To be able to stand here is a miracle. If you knew where I come from, if you knew who I was when Christ called me, my state and the level of poverty. I come from a background where the poor called us poor. Now, if the poor call you poor, you are poor indeed. You are really poor. <laughs> I come from that kind of background. So to me, it's an honor and a privilege to stand before you people who are well-dressed, smart, and academically accomplished. Glory be to God. I can see my friend there. <laughs> I can see my team there. Thank you for coming. Uh -huh. Academically accomplished. I would ask you, in the next few minutes, to follow. You might get lost if you don't follow. Please follow. Follow me very, very closely. The word I want to pull out from the New Testament, the word that brings out the scripture very, very clearly is the word importunity. You write that word, importunity. You can name your daughter. Give your daughter that name for those of you who have just gotten married. If you give birth to a daughter, say, my name is, my daughter is importunity. <laughs> Cultivating importunity in our prayer lives. 
is what I want to talk about. Yes. I want to define, let me begin by defining that word. Father, bless the next few moments in the name of Jesus. May your presence be with us. May every word that comes out of my mouth be loaded with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. So I'll give you some basic definitions. And I'll also use scripture to define that very word. And then I'll give you my testimonies. Some few testimonies that, things that have just happened not too long ago. The testimonies I'm going to share, some of you may not believe. Because you have a scientific mind. You are scientifically oriented. Yes. Yeah, but the power of God goes beyond science, by the way. Yeah. Okay? It might be hard for you to believe, but please believe. Let me define the word importunity. That word means persistent and urgent request or demand. Take note of that. Persistent. We are talking of relying on God's strength. Persistent and urgent request or demand. The second definition is insistent solicitation. Insistent. Underscore the word persistent. Underscore the word insistent. Insistent solicitation and entreaty. Entreaty means honest appeal, honest appeal. Now, if you pull out the word persistent and insistent and honest appeal, inside there, there is passion. Inside there, there's energy. Inside there, there's enthusiasm. Okay? Energy, passion, enthusiasm. Okay? Now, those are English definitions. Now, let's use the scriptures. Let's pull out the scriptures themselves. Scriptures. In Matthew, follow us closely, ladies and gentlemen. In Matthew 7, 7, I'm reading from the Amplified. The King James says, ask and you shall receive. The Amplified says, keep on asking. Take note of that. There's a big difference there. Okay? You see, you can ask and stop. Uh -huh. The Amplified says, keep on asking, keep on seeking, keep on knocking. For whoever keeps on asking, that's what, receives. Can you say amen there? Amen. The issue here is keeping on asking, not asking. And then you stop. Whoever keeps on asking receives. In uh, Luke chapter 18, verse 1, Christ pulls out, I mean, we pull out a scripture, a statement that Christ made that is in tandem with Zechariah 4 6. Christ says, Men ought always to pray and not to faint. Now, listen, prayer can be tough, prayer can be challenging, prayer can be frustrating, prayer can be disappointing. But Christ says, If you want to see the benefits of prayer, do what? Pray. Always and do not faint. You see, when you faint, what happens? You begin to depend on human strength. Yes. Okay? You move from God's strength to human strength. So Christ is saying, pray always. Always. Now, I look for the word always. I don't think there's anybody here, when you're reading a book, and you come across the word always, You'd want to go to the dictionary to find out its meaning. Do you? 
Always means what? Always. <laughs> so you may not want to know the meaning. But listen. I said, why did Christ use the word always? Listen. The word always means at all times. Take note of that. The word always means all the time and on every occasion. So what Christ is saying is pray at all times. Pray all the time and on every occasion. Every occasion do what? Pray. That's what Christ is saying. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. And he knew that we can get weary. And many have gotten weary. And many fail because they're weary. He says, always. Now, he comes on the picture. Look at Luke 21. Luke 21, verse 36. I'm not going to read everything because of our time. Jesus says, watch it therefore and pray always. Then, see what he does in verse 37. And in the daytime, he was teaching in the temple. And at night, he went out and abode in the mount that's called the Mount of Olives. Daytime, teaching. In the night, he went to a place. That was his place of prayer. The Mount of Olives was the place of prayer for Christ. Christ, during the day, is talking, preaching, sharing, casting out demons. In the night... In the night, not one night. In the night, Christ is at the mountain. And what does he do? He prays through the night. Over and over again. Now listen, Christ had a place of prayer. I will talk about that later on. He had a place. A place where he would meet God over and over and over again. During the day. He was teaching. He was preaching. In the night, he went and abode in the mountain. Luke 22 and verse 39. And he came out and he went as he was wont. That's what the King James says. Other versions say, as he was accustomed to, to the Mount of Olives. Prayer had become a habit. Prayer had become a lifestyle. Prayer was something he was doing over and over again. It had become part of him. He went, he came out, and he went. As he was accustomed to, as he was accustomed to, it had become a lifestyle. Now, those are the Gospels. That's from the Gospel. Let's see what Paul says. Paul, in Colossians, chapter 4, Paul says, continue in prayer. Continue. Continue. Ugandans, continue in prayer. Women, continue. Continue. Listen, continue. I'm going to give you some testimonies. Continue in prayer. Continue. Now, the word continue means what? Continue. Yes, it means continue. But I said, no, 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 no. This word continue may have some other meaning. And this is what I found out. Continue means, one, go on. Continue means stay on. Continue means carry on. Continue means go forward. Continue means maintain in unaltered condition. Maintain. Please write that down. Continue means maintain in unaltered condition. Continue means persist in doing something repeatedly, and showing no intention to stop. Let me repeat that. Persist in doing something repeatedly and showing no intention to stop. You do it 
over and over and over and over and over and over and over with no intention of stopping. You continue, you go forward, you carry on, you move on, you maintain a given condition. That is what that scripture is talking about. The other meaning of continue is exist over a prolonged period of time. Prolonged. You pray for three weeks and you say God doesn't answer prayer. Yes. God doesn't answer prayer. You have a headache, pray for three days. God has not answered my prayer. Prayer, listen, prayer is a journey that needs to be prolonged. Can we now go to Isaiah? Isaiah 38. And then I'll share with you one or two testimonies. Isaiah 38. Hezekiah falls sick. The prophet goes to Hezekiah and says, set your house in order, verse 1, for you shall die and not live. Take note of the response of Hezekiah. And he said, remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee, have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart. And I've done that which is good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. Now listen to me. There are times when God allows us get to a place, you'd call it a rock and a hard place. Why does he take us there? He takes us there. so that we may cry. He takes us there so that tears may come out, tears. Hezekiah wept bitterly. Now, when you have a problem, like I've had problems, when you have a physical problem and it takes a long time, a long time, that problem becomes emotional. Emotional pain is more painful than physical pain. Emotional pain will break you. Will break you. There are people, you look at them on the outside, they look very nice. Yes, very, very nice. You talk to them. In the inside, they are crippled. On the outside, they put on nice red. You see, there are people put on bright, very, very bright. Every time bright, 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 bright. Because there are issues in the inside. Yes. The brightness covers the darkness in the inside. I'm not saying those of you are put on bright now. Yes. I'm not saying that. No, 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 no. The currency that runs the economy of Uganda is what? Uganda shillings. The currency that runs United Kingdom is what? The currency that runs America is what? The currency that runs the kingdom of God is called tears. Yes, tears. That is it. So listen, that is it. That is it. If you need to know, the currency that runs God's kingdom is called tears. So there are times when God needs tears to do something for you. So God allows you to be squeezed. He allows you to be cornered. He allows you to be put in a place where you will cry. Listen, you will cry. Especially if the problem has been there for a long time. 
Now listen. If you had a problem for a long time, it is very easy to cry. Very easy. Yes. People who don't cry are people whose inside is not broken. People who cry are people whose inside has been broken by an issue or a problem or a need or a request. You prayed over something for a long time and you are broken. Now listen. It is brokenness that brings out tears. I'm telling you. And when tears come out, your, your answer to prayer is about there. I'm telling you the truth. Yes. Listen. What is it that you've been praying for for a long time? And when you begin to pray, tears just flow. What is it? That answer is about to come. Because God is near to them that have a broken heart. If you've been praying and praying, and whenever you pray, tears just flow, Aborogand, it just comes out. The prayer is about to be answered. Now, what is that that you've been praying for? You've been praying for it for a long time, and that's why there's brokenness, and that's why there's tears. Okay, now listen. Hezekiah cries. God took note of that. And in verse 5, the Bible says, the Bible says, God said, I have heard your cries. I have seen your tears. Two things. Listen, many times we just make, cry, 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 cry. I mean, pray, 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 pray. God says, I've seen two things. I have heard your voice. I've heard you cry. But I've also seen your tears. I have seen brokenness. Listen, brokenness. And the prayers were answered. Yes. God, the prayers of the saints, listen, are kept in golden vials in heaven. They are very precious. Extremely precious. Very, very precious. You're crying? You're broken? You've cried for a long time? You're about to get what you've been praying for, I can assure you. A girl in Victoria's. Believed God for four aggregates. The father is a pastor. The mother is also a pastor. She worked hard for four. I normally go to pray for schools. During, went towards the exam. I go. Take different schools. Some give me goats. I pray in the past, they give me a goat. Now when I come and pray for you, you also give me a goat to you. No, 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 I'm just joking. Okay. The, 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 so I go to this school. We're, we're giving thanks because the school had done very well. Done very well. A girl out of the crowd comes. Brought by the father and the mother. And the father said, can you pray for our daughter? Our daughter has been believing God for Buddha. And worked hard to get four. She has gotten six. And she thinks she's not going to Buddha. By the way, Buddha, <laughs> even if you get four. <laughs> yes. You need a letter from somewhere. Is it Kabaka? Yes. <laughs> my, my father was in Buddha. I'm telling you. My father started in Buddha. My children started in Buddha. Yes. Even if you get four, you need a letter from somewhere, you need Kavaka, Richie, Parliament, Richie, uh, even Church of Uganda, yes. You need a letter from here. I'm telling you the truth, yes. You need some letter from here. Even if you get ten, and you get some letter from here, you go to Budo. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you. Listen, I'm just telling you the truth, because I'm there, I'm there. I'm there. So, the girl knew she was not going to Budo. Because she got six. So the father said, I don't have anybody I know. 
I don't have anybody in church of Uganda I know. I don't know the Kabaka. I don't know the old Budonians. So you pray for our daughter. Listen. I laid hands upon the daughter. I began to pray. When I opened my eyes, I saw tears flowing. Tears. The girl wanted Buddha. The girl had prayed for Buddha. The girl was disappointed because she was not going to Buddha. When I saw the tears, I told the parents, to Buddha, she will go. The other day, I went, last week I went to Buddha. I found her in Buddha. I'm telling you. The tears, listen, those tears don't go unnoticed in the kingdom of God. Let me tell you, those tears are not wasted. The tears that you shed day in and day out are not wasted. They are noticed by God. I went to Budo. She saw me in the crowd. She came and hugged me and went away. Glory be to God. We didn't talk much. I knew what she was saying. I knew what she was saying. Yes. My father was one of those very fast people to go to Budo because his father was powerful. His father was the richest man in our district. So he went to Budo. Yeah. And because he went to Budo, he was a proud man. I'm telling you. Because he speaks Budonian English. <laughs> yeah. Very proud man, very proud. So proud that I would see him when he gets drunk. He drank from 1948 up to 2000. So proud that I would see him abusing people, abusing my mother, abusing relatives, because he was bright, Budonian, bright. You know, he would take advice from nobody. There are times when we tell him, but you, we are now old enough. If you want to make a decision, can we be part of it? No. He would hear nothing from you, nothing. Nothing from the mother, nothing from the relatives, nothing from us. Budonian. Yeah, Budonian. Budonian. And his English, I'm telling you, even if I write a letter or an article, he's the one who corrects. He has Budonian English, Budonian accent. He knows the holes, I mean the, 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 the what do you call the holes? Not holes, houses, up to now. And he wanted all of us to go to Buddha. Oh. Pride. Listen, he married, I don't know how many wives, one woman after another, because he was from Budo, he had the money. The number of women my father had, I don't know. The number of children my father had, we don't. We're just meeting. The other day I met Felix Odoi. Felix Odoi is my brother. I didn't know. I didn't know. It is my father, when he came home, when he came home, my father saw him and said, this is your brother, this one. <laughs> That's your brother, yes, that's your brother. I said, but where has he been? Where has he been? He's born again, fortunately. We hugged, we we're friends, and so on and so forth. We don't know where our sisters are. We don't know where our brothers are. We don't know. And he doesn't tell you. It's only when you meet. Like when you meet in the streets, he says, this is your mother. Yeah. This one's also your mother. This one. <laughs> that's your mother. Yes. Now listen, just listen to me. One day, he brought another woman. And he brought another woman when he was 70. That woman had HIV AIDS. They didn't go for testing. He married this woman. My friend, make the, to cut the long story short, he developed HIV AIDS. Symptoms. He began getting thin and thinner. The lips changed. Broke down mentally. I am telling you the shame, the shame that we're experiencing in the village. 
Because they would say, you see that young man there? His father is the next victim. His father is the next person to die because of HIV AIDS is his father. Yes. Painful. Painful. But listen, just listen. When I gave my life to the Lord Jesus Christ, he spoke to me and he said, one, listen, please listen. He said, one, faith be unto you. That was number one. Two, he said, your back is healed from today. I had a backache, a chronic backache, a backache that defied medication. I was taken to witch doctors. I was taken to consultants. I, was, I had a surgery. I went through physiotherapy. It defied everything until I knew Christ, and Christ is the one who set me free. I am standing here. I am standing here today because of what Christ did. I could not stand. I could not stand here for a long time. I had to stand, sit, squat, lie down. I could not go up here. No. The pain was so much that I wanted to commit suicide. That's when Christ found me, and he delivered me, and he set me free. I am free today. Yes, free. So listen, he told me, your back is healed from today. Then he said, I give you the power to go and preach the gospel. As I gave Paul on the road to Damascus, go and preach to all creatures, and wherever you go, I will be with you. Then he said, all your family problems are in my hands. All. Then he said, for your sake, I am giving you everybody in your family. There's nobody in your family who will die without Christ. Everybody. Now listen. Just listen to me. Including my grandparents. Five of them have died now. Five. But all of them knew Christ. Five. Yes. That means what he said has come to pass. Five have died, have, have given their life to Christ. Now, there are those that were difficult. Very difficult. The most difficult one was my father. Very, he was drinking. Drunk every day. He's drinking. And this one was the most difficult. Very, very difficult. So I said, God, I think this one will get saved on his deathbed. Because I don't know how my father can, I don't know, but let me, I prayed, we prayed. Listen, we saw him deteriorate. We saw him losing weight. We saw him do what people who have HIV AIDS do. I won't go into those details. I'm telling you, I was there by his bedside with my, my sister by his bedside. Now listen, it took a long time. It broke him. He was no longer talking of Budo. Listen, Budo was gone. He was no longer talking about women. It was gone. No, no, no. He was going through so much pain that he would have loved to die. I'm telling you the truth. So much pain that my father desired death. When it was too much, he screamed. I'm leaving out some details. When it was too much, he screamed, and all of us were shocked to this day. He screamed and said, Jesus, have mercy upon me. And Jesus did. He did. What led him to that? Prolonged suffering. Prolonged pain. And what were some of us doing as children? We were praying. We were saying, God, deliver us from shame. This man is known in the village. His father was the richest in this district. Everybody knows him. Deliver us from shame. We prayed and told God what he told us. Listen. My father today is born again. My father today is free of HIV AIDS. Free. I'm telling you the truth. My father now says, listen, my father now says, I not only believe in Christ, but I've seen Christ with my own eyes. I have seen him. 
what led my father to call upon the name of Christ is what we call brokenness. Brokenness invites the supernatural on the scene. If you are praying now, and as you pray, tears flow. Tears. Tears flow. God is there. I'm telling you the truth. He is there. I'll give you another example. And then give you some keys, just tips. On how to cultivate this thing called dependence on God. My mother, who's now here, if you have arguments, she's here. Yes. My mother is 87 now. Yes. But she had rejected Christ. Now, I don't know what's wrong with the women at 87. <laughs> Your husband is born again. Her mother is born again. Your children are born again. And you're the only one who's there, not born again. The only one. So I talk to her over and over again, over and over again, over and over again, over and over again. Nothing, nothing, nothing. She developed a skin condition, which we failed to know, I mean to discover, the cause and what it was. We tried to treat it. It was getting worse and worse. Her body was becoming darker and darker, and she was getting wounds all over the place. We prayed, nothing. We consulted, nothing. It, it came to a time when she could not even come out of the bedroom. So this day she was walking on crutches. And as she was walking, she said she felt something was coming out of her. And then she collapsed and passed out. Now listen to me. The person who was looking after her rang me and said, your mother has died. I said, no. Now listen, I went to God, argued with God, because he spoke to me. I went to God and I said, God, you say you are my friend. Now, my mother died without you letting me know. And you've told me you are my friend, not once, about three times, three times, that you're my friend. How can a friend not tell a friend something like this? <laughs> that was one. Two, two, I told God, my wife was in the sitting room, I was in the bedroom, I told God, God, in 1980, when you spoke to me, you said, this is what you said, that everybody in your family will be born again. Now, my mother has died without Christ. I don't accept it. You said it. And if you say it, you bring it to pass. How come my mother has died without you? No, I don't accept. I believe in you to bring back her soul. Now we began to pray for her soul to come back. Then, there's a lady there in the village, an intercessor. She normally prays. Every day she's praying. They called her. Now, in the village, when somebody dies, you know that people will come. So people had come, and people were mourning. They had covered her with the bed sheet. This lady came, went into her room, removed the bed sheet. Said, we're going to believe God that she comes back to life. They rang my sister. My sister also said, no. I don't accept that. She also began to say, we, are, we can pray her back to life. When my mother passed out, she went into another world. Let me talk about that world. Yes. For those of you who are getting discouraged, for those of you who think this is the only world, there is another world. Yes. She went into another world. She called it Perfect. She saw 
perfection. She said, I have never been in a place like this. Never. She saw angels, given the description, tall beings with wings, blacks, and whites, and they were dancing, 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 mentioning her name, Grace, Rose, Grace, Rose, Grace, Rose. Then she also began to dance. Yes. <laughs> she joined them, dancing, Grace, Rose, Grace, Rose. She looked at her skin. The problems that she had on earth were gone. Her skin was soft. Her skin was fresh. She's 87. She saw herself as a young girl. Where she went, a beautiful young girl. Then listen, she was told, you will come back here, but we are sending you back to the earth. That's when, when she was being taken to the hospital, she coughed, came back to life. My mother, now listen to me. My mother is alive today. You listen. My mother <clears throat> is born again today. <clears throat> listen. It took 42 years of prayer. 42 years of not giving up to bring this lady to Christ. She has become an evangelist now. You meet her now. She's talking about Christ and heaven. She says, you leave this place. There is a better place. And I've been there. That's what my mother is saying today. So listen. Has God spoken to you? Hasn't he answered? Keep on believing. Keep on praying. Continue, my friend. The answer will come. It will come. Our problem... Our problem is giving up, fainting. But he said, men ought always to pray and not faint. Do not faint. Now, very quickly, what are the tips? Just some few, and I'll end there. Very, very quickly. Yes. If you want to maintain that dependence on God. You want to, to, to keep praying without changing. Not depending on human effort. So that you can say not by power or by might, but by the spirit of the living God. What do I need to do? Number one, set aside a dedicated time for prayer. Men in Kampala and women in Kampala. Yes. Set that time aside. Get a place. Set the time. Commit yourself to the place and to that time. You have food you don't have. You have a boyfriend you don't have. You have school fees you don't have. Commit yourself to that place and time, day in, day out, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Give, give yourself a place, a place. Get. Stop. If you people have very nice houses. I know. By the way, I, I look. The way you look. You have very nice houses. One of the rooms you give it to God. Yes. Yeah. I'm telling you. Yes. Now, don't give God the worst room. Yes. Yeah. You get one room there, one room there, that you go to. It can be there, it can be a church, it can be anywhere. But you go to that place day in and day out. Day in and day out. Day in and day out. Let me tell you what happened to me recently. 
Recently, we shall have four boys. One has just finished, just finished the other day. Another one is about to finish, fifth year medical student. Then the two, one is in Budo, another one is Marcos. The school fees every semester is about 15 million shillings. Now to raise that amount of money is a challenge. Yes. So I'm forced on my knees. So this first one rings me and says, Daddy, we need school fees and the deadline is tomorrow. And I didn't have it. Yes. If, if there's no money tomorrow, I won't do this exam. And this was his final, very, very final exams. So what did I do? Because every Thursday, if you want to meet me, I am in Kampala House of Prayer. Every Thursday. Every Thursday, that's where I am. From morning up to evening. Unless I'm sick or I've traveled. But that's where I am. Let God know your spiritual address and physical address. Yes. Yes. So listen. I go to the house of prayer in the morning and I begin to pray. And what was I praying for? School fees. Nothing else. I didn't know where school fees was going to come from. I didn't know. But I knew that I was in a room where the owner of that room can provide for school fees. Yes. So I began to pray. I prayed, you know, 10 o'clock, uh, 11, 12, nothing, you know, 2 o'clock, 3, 4. At, at 5, normally on Thursday, they close it at 5, so that you go to the main auditorium, it is upstairs. They close it at 5. At 5, listen, a woman comes into the prayer room. And she was healthy, a healthy woman. Yes, blessed. Mm, blessed with flesh and blood. Mm. She comes in. Mm. She comes in. She comes in into the prayer room and sat next to me. I said, what an audacious woman. She sat next to me. Then she asked, have you been praying from morning up to this time? I said, yes. He said, she said, have you eaten something? I said, no. Then she said, I think you need to eat something. Yeah. Can you follow me? Hey. <laughs> A woman you don't know. I mean, well. <laughs> Just listen, listen. A woman who's blessed, she's blessed. Not the, she's blessed, she's blessed. She comes and says, you follow me. Normally, I would not want to do that, especially from a prayer room, but I followed her. Yes, I followed. We went to the compound. She had come with her vehicle. She said, you follow me. Okay. I also got into the vehicle that God gave me. And I followed this woman, this blessed woman. I followed her. She drove, we drove, we drove, we drove, we drove, we drove. To a certain hotel, okay, and we sat down. Then she said, you order for whatever you want. I said, thank you, Lord, I ordered. Yes. <laughs> yes, I ordered. <laughs> I ordered. As we began to eat, she pulled out an envelope and gave it to me. That was the school fees I needed for the next day. Yes. Everything covered. Hey, now, that woman is not here, I'm telling you. you. You can look for her in camp. You won't find her. She's not there. Yes. You won't find, you will not find her. Now, listen. If I had gone to that prayer room and left at 10, I would have missed her. Oh, at 11, I would have missed her. Oh, four thirty. I was there from morning up to the last moment. That's when she came. And I got the school fees. 
My son is graduating. Yes. Listen, my friends. Get a place. Commit yourself to that place. Yes. God will find you there. That's number one. Number two, for you not to faint, for you to keep depending on God's strength, keep a prayer journal. Write down the items of prayer. Write down the items of prayer. Things that you pray for, you write them down. Praying for yourself and praying for others. Even when praying for others, you write them down. When God, when you pray for others, and God answers their prayers. It means he's working. Some of you think he should answer your prayers for you, for you to know he's working. No. When God is answering the prayers of others, he's working. So you tick. Whenever he answers a prayer, tick. Whenever he answers, tick. Whenever he answers, tick. Have items of prayer written down in a book. And listen, you realize that the God you think does not answer prayer, he really answers prayer. Number three, number three, you pray with gratitude. Go to God, not complaining. Listen, Abolganda, stop complaining. You go to God. With thanksgiving. And how are you going to thank God? Go back to your journal. Where you put your requests. And begin thanking God for what he has done. God, we prayed for this you answered. Thank you. We prayed for this you answered. And then this one. And then this one. And then this one. Then you can begin to ask. Begin by thanking him. And thank him on a daily basis. Daily. God does things to us that we have things to thank him for daily. Now you bring those things to him daily, even if you don't have other requests. That is prayer. Number, number four, and maybe the second last, set realistic expectations or goals. You know? Don't go for things that you know you may never get. Yes. I'll give you an example. A young man. I think senior one or senior two there. He had mental problems. We prayed for him. God, not serious, mental, mild. God healed him. He became our interpreter. He was a man of prayer. He would pray. He would pray. He would pray. Now, he believed that the president's daughter was going to be his wife. Yes. He believed that the patience, was it patience? Yes. He believed that the patience, that God, senior one, senior two, that God had spoken to him about patience. And there was someone there, in one of those apartments, who would tell him, yes, I have access to her. So you can write. So he would write. You know, dear persons, God has spoken to me about you, and so on and so forth. You know, I'm going to marry you, or things like that. Let me tell you. Up to this day, he's still single. Up to this day. Yes. Up to this day. And this was in the year 2005, there, 2007. Up to this day, he's still single. Set realistic expectations. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, a teacher. I normally go to Victoria. I normally go to Victoria's every Wednesday to meet teachers, uh, students, uh, parents, members of the community. A teacher comes. And the teacher says, I want you to pray for me. Her children are in the university. I said, what do you want me to pray for you? She said, I want to participate in the next world marathon. You see? Yes. Uh, 
She's not 20, she's not 30, she's not 40, she's in her 50s, yes, yes. Now, some of you think that we preachers don't have problems. <laughs> this was a lady in her 50s wanting to represent Uganda, and you see they were going for selection, they were going to Chambogo, they were going to Chambogo, so she says, I want to go there and I want to believe God that I'll be chosen to represent Uganda to go and run there, Matembe. <laughs> to go and run, run there. Okay. I said, have you been practicing? I said, yes, I've been practicing. There is, yeah, I've been practicing. I've been practicing. Now, listen, in my, I did not laugh because I didn't want to offend her. I did not laugh. But in my heart, I was laughing. I was honestly laughing. Listen. She told me, brother, with God, all things are possible. All things. <laughs> Lastly, for today. For today. <laughs> yes? <laughs> for today. Lastly. Mm. Yes. Pray, pray with others and for others. Join a prayer group. Come out with a partner. A partner who's into prayer. A partner who will encourage you in prayer. A partner who can come and, you know, if you're down, he'll lift you up. Have a prayer partner. Join a prayer group. Participate in prayer activities. If you are invited for prayer, pray, 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 pray. If you have a partner and somebody you pray with, God can reveal this or the other to them and so on and so forth. When you are in need, a lady, a manager, she is heavily in debt. Seriously in debt. Because her sponsors have not been sending money. They send money, it just bounces. They have used banks, it bounces. They have used World Remit, it bounces. They have used a mobile line, it does. And it's like, what is going on? The creditors are on her. She has borrowed money here, borrowed money there, and so on and so on. But this is a lady I've been praying for for so many years now. I have a list of people I pray for. So she rang me on this particular day and said, things are bad. Things have got into my nerves. What do I do? Yes, money is being sent, it doesn't come. What's happening? Listen to what I said. I don't know whether that came from God or what, but I just told her, how much money do you have now, right now? She said 30,000. I said, now, get 10%, give it away. Give it to whoever. Get somebody who's hungry, sick, and you get that, give it away. She did that. Two hours after that, the money came. Yes. I'm telling you. The money came. And she paid all her debts. Oh, most of our debts. You need somebody else to support you in prayer. Don't pray alone. Don't pray alone. Have others who will support you in prayer. Have people you look at and admire. Yes. People who encourage you in prayer. Let me end with this. I... I began praying, well, because of where I come from, my background. If it wasn't for prayer, some of us would have died a long time ago. Yes. But two things helped me to pray. And let me tell you, I would like to die praying. Yes. Yeah. Some of you wake up, go to work. For me, if there's no work to do, I go to pray. 
There's no engagement of the. I, I dress like you dress, and I go to pray. Yes. Yes. And I do that time and time again. The first thing that made me pray, and it's there, it's stuck, it is stuck in me, was my own sister who died. Sarah Doy. Sarah felt sick and was sick for a long time. Now she knew she was dying, but she didn't want to tell me because the two of us were close. We were the only two who were born again then, the rest were drunkards. So she didn't want to tell me that she was dying. But when I went to meet her in the hospital, she said, Dennis, God loves you so much. And those were her last words. She goes back home. She was staying at the Archbishop's place then, Yono Court. I think some of you know him. So she goes to Yono's place. In the night, she kneels down and begins to pray. And prayed and prayed and prayed and died on her knees praying. I'm telling you. People woke up and they thought she had woken up in the morning to pray. They called her, Sarah, Sarah, on shaking her. Sarah was dead. God spoke to me and said, Dennis, I want you to do what Sarah was doing before Sarah died. That has never gone out of my mind. I began to pray. And I prayed from that day to this day. Yes. Then, lastly, I go to the university. And you see, I told you my background. I went, I think I was the only one who had one trouser. One pair of shoes. No stockings. But I was there. I was there. I meet powerful women. Very powerful. I even fear. I meet Jennifer Musisi. I don't know whether she's hearing. Let her hear. Whatever she is. I meet Jennifer Musisi. I meet Alan Kajina. I meet Grace. Those three ladies. Let me tell you. You see these ladies here, Alan here, there. Those ladies have prayed. Don't think Alan became you are a, I don't know, director. For nothing. I am telling you, Alan, praise. This Jennifer was who disturbed you here in Kampala. That lady, praise. Grace, Serwanga, praise. So, I go to the university. These ladies were up there. That Jennifer, even in our first year, Jennifer would have her holidays in France. For us, it is Melanda. She goes to France. <laughs> this is Jennifer. This is Jennifer. I'm telling you. Jennifer comes back for holiday from, from holidays and says, I went to UK, then, you know, France, then US. And I've just come back. For you, use the train to Melanda. <laughs> use the train to Melanda. Yes. But listen. Those girls were three like this, moving together all the time. There was something about them that I was interested in, but I feared them. Because even the dresses they were putting on, my friend. Oh, 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 oh. oh. I'm telling you, the dresses, some of us, haha. <laughs> so how would I approach these girls? I didn't know how. I was one year old in the Lord. I saw something special about them. I didn't know what that was. I was attracted to them, but I feared them. I mean, somebody who says, I am from France, for you are from Orlando. You know, I, I just, I. So, one day, I was getting into the university. They were coming out, three of them. And I went and I stood in front of them. God gave me the guts. <laughs> mm. 
and I asked, I asked, I said, you, what makes this something about you that is special? What, what is this? Grace answered. Grace said, Dennis, if you want to change and your environment to change, you pray. And they walked away. That's how powerful they were. Yes. They just walked away. Yeah. That, that statement has never left me to this day. If you want to change and your environment to change, you pray. Now listen. As long as you are praying, there's hope. As long as you continue to depend on the strength of God, one day you'll say, not by might, not by power, but by the spirit of the living God. For the spirit of God to work and to do something, give him a platform. And that platform is continuing in prayer. And let me end with this. Ladies and gentlemen, pray and pray and pray and pray and pray and pray and pray. God bless you.